everybody. Welcome back to another Daily Drop here on TarHillIllustrated.com. I'm THI publisher Andrew Jones. And the topic today, with less than two weeks before the formal start of the regular season, Carolina basketball is basically here. We've already seen them in person in a game-like situation at Memphis. I learned a lot from that game. I learned a lot being up close to the team as they played what was a highly competitive and spirited game. And one of the ga- one of the guys I, I watched off the ball was Jalen Withers. And we are going to do the Jalen Withers preview, daily drop preview here in this edition. I, I think that he's a guy sort of like last year, we wondered, well, how's he going to take shape? I still think As comfortable as he was at the end of last year, it might be a while before there's full comfort for Jay Witt this year. And the reason I say that is because when I look at this team out on the floor, athletically, he clearly fits in. He's a great athlete. From a defensive standpoint and effort and a little bit of motor, I think he fits in. I think he gives them sort of that an edginess that they need. Remember in the uh, Seth Trimble podcast, Daily Drop yesterday, I talked about how they're going to find some of what Harrison Ingram and Cormac Ryan gave them last year. I think Seth can do some of that. I think Jay Witt can do some of that as well. Smart guy, edgy guy, deepest voice of any dude I've covered maybe ever, certainly in a long time. Strong at 6'9", 220. I think he plays a little stronger at times. Uh, Long wingspan, longer wingspan than his height. Someone who's been around, very mature. A guy who's had some personal success, but also has had some struggles. And that missed three last year against Alabama sat with him, still sits with him, still thinks about it. And one of the reasons is because he got crucified by the fans afterward. The guy helped get him to that point. He was phenomenal for about three weeks before they went out to Los Angeles and he missed a shot, missed an open shot, a shot that he made a year before. Let's remember His last year at Louisville, Jalen Withers was 40 of 96 from three-point range. That's a healthy sample size. It's 41%. He was 4 of 20 last year. The shot attempts being only 20, part because of his minutes played, also his confidence was shot for a while from shooting that ball. So it's a shot he thinks he would have made the year before. And it's a shot I think he thinks he would make now. And he's got a lot of that confidence back with his shooting. Very quickly, before I go a little bit more into this year, uh, his numbers from a year ago, he played in all 37 games, 12.4 minutes, 4.2 points, 3.6 rebounds. He had 18 block shots, shot 53.3% from the floor, and he was at almost 80% from the free throw line in 59 attempts. So you know he can shoot. He's not a bricklayer. He just lay, he just put a lot of them up last year. In his last seven games of last season, 5.7 points, 6.1 rebounds. He had a double-double in the opening round NCAA tournament win over Wagner, 16 and 10. So what to expect from Jalen Weathers this year? I think it's a big unknown simply because I don't know where his skill is offensively. He's a guy that doesn't have great hands, and he's a little bit of a live wire out there. So sometimes his efforts to score in the paint aren't super fluid. But they're aggressive. There's energy. And he's put the ball in the basket enough. There's confidence. But does his role become one where, hey, Jalen, when you're on the floor and you've got Elliot at the point and RJ at the two, and Seth or Cade at the three, and whoever, Vin Allen Lubin or whoever else at the four, and you're playing the five, or you're the four, and Jalen Washington is a five, you don't need to shoot a whole lot. You can convert when something's there, but you don't need to pound on the floor and create. I have a feeling some of those conversations have been had and will be had. That's not to say that he cannot create his own shot. It's just not as fluid as some of the other guys. And I know from talking with him a couple weeks ago, this dude wants to win. He wants to be a part of a winner. So he'll do the dirty work. He'll embrace wearing that lunch pail or putting a hole in that lunch pail and that hard, wearing that hard hat and doing the things it takes to win. The key will be where is his comfort zone in doing that and how much will he try to create for himself? How much will he look for instant offense? And if he does look for it, will it be there? 
will the perimeter shot come back when he gets it uh, when the ball is swung to him at the top of the key or he's playing the five and there's a pick and pop situation is he able to nail that shot knock it down that's going to be huge because i think if he can do that he's going to play a lot now he started the memphis game i'm not sure he's going to start moving forward i do not know I have a feeling that early in the year, this might be a fluid starting situation in, in a couple of spots. Certainly in three of them, or in two of them. I think that Elliot, RJ, and Kate are probably locked in. And we'll talk about Kate another time, but don't read too much into... I did the Kate drop last week. Don't read too much into what you saw against Memphis. And I'll remind you, he also had nine rebounds in that game. And I think lost himself in the game more and more as it went on. Jalen Withers fouled out in the game. He showed some of the things from a year ago that were kind of disjointed, but he also did some pretty good things. Again, not going to read too much into that game. We'll have to wait and see how this plays out. But I think as far as rebounding, as far as defending, as far as annoying the crap out of other teams, cleaning up around the basket, in transition, a guy who can step out and and hit a three. So if you put – with – with Jalen Withers and Van Allen Lubin, whichever one moves to the five when Jalen Washington goes to the bench, you don't have to change your offense. You can still run everything because they can both step out. They can both pick and pop. Lubin's really good at pick and pop. And I'll tell you another thing Lubin can do that Jay Wash d- uh, does well is roll. So can Jay Witt. He can roll to the basket. So they can be who they are with Jay Witt and stretches at the five. And I think you're going to see that. Part of, you're gonna, part of the reason you're going to see that is because there's a bully ball element to what he does. I think that that's really important for this team. So I'm looking forward to seeing how things sort of play out for him. He's going to help this team. He's going to play. He's going to have a bigger role than a year ago. Whatever he can produce offensively from a consistency standpoint, I think is up is a question mark. We'll, we'll have to go into the season with and see – how long it takes him, if he ever does, to sort of eliminate that question mark. It'll be very, very interesting to see that by Christmas, if we kind of know how he fits in from a production standpoint, because he's going to screen, he's going to rebound, he's going to box out, he's going to defend, he's going to run the offense, he's going to play off everybody, he's going to occasionally find somebody and get them the ball. But how much does he put the ball in the basket? That to me is, is is the biggest question, and I'm looking forward to seeing how that plays out. I'd like to know what you guys think. How excited are you about what Jay Witt can become with the team running more? When you got guys like Jay Witt in the open court, and you got guys like Seth Trimble in the open court, this team could put on a little bit more of a highlight reel show than some recent Carolina teams because of that. And how excited are you at having a 24 year old? who has a role, who knows he doesn't have to be the guy and isn't going to be the guy, but he's willing to do the little things to help this team win. And he's an experienced 24-year-old at that because he played a lot when he was at Louisville. And the other thing I want to ask you is this. Let's go ahead and give me a prediction. What will Jalen Withers shoot from the perimeter? I want a percentage. And if you need to do a percentage point like 33.7 or 42.4, Give that to me. Go ahead and let us know what it is. I will save it. And at the end of the basketball season, whoever's closest, I will give a one-year comp membership to TarHillIllustrated.com, which is eight thirty-three a month with a one-year subscription. It's ten dollars a month if you don't do a one-year subscription. So it's a hundred-dollar deal. So I'll give you a hundred-dollar value. It's really a lot more value, more valuable than that. $100 value for a free comp, but you got to tweet it at us or tell us on Facebook or tell us on our message boards exactly what his perimeter, his three point shooting percentage will be. And at the end of the year, we'll go back and revisit and somebody will win a free subscription. If you have not signed up and subscribed to THI on YouTube, please go ahead and do so. Make sure that you hit the notification bell so you get updates every time we upload. Tell your Carolina friends that we're here. Not enough people know we're here. And if you want to just go ahead and buy a subscription now, say 33 a month for a one year sub, tarheelillustrate.com. Head on over there. Right now is a perfect time to do it because basketball recruiting is heating up. David Sisk is kicking, you know what, doing that. And we got basketball season. So much of our stuff is behind a paywall. Has to be because we go where the Tar Heels go and it costs money to properly cover Carolina football. Carolina basketball and recruiting 
for both sports. I'm AJ, and I appreciate you stopping by.